Father God, we come to you this morning with praise and thanksgiving. In this time of turmoil in our whole world, we thank you for your love, comfort, and support to our families and our church. Our gratitude lists are long, Father. We especially thank you for the AUMC staff and the many volunteers who have worked hours on end to keep our worship services available our Sunday school classes and children's ministry ongoing, our services to our church families and our Ackworth community stronger than ever. 
Many of us have been affected directly by this pandemic with the loss of loved ones, illnesses, financial losses, education interruptions, and a sense of fear. But we know that you are in control and that our trust in you will get us through these hard times, Lord. May we leave this service today renewed in our faith and knowledge that we can have a positive effect on everyone we have contact with this week. We pray the prayer that you gave us, O Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Good morning, I'm Angie Crummy. I'm the new associate pastor at, here at Ackworth. Uh, first of all, I wanna thank you so much for the warm welcome last Sunday and all the cards and encouraging words. Um, Jean and I are looking forward to serving here for a while with you. Our message today is from 1 Kings and there's a question that I want you to consider during the message. The question is, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? The passage is part of the story of Elijah let me give you a little history first before I read the text for today. You see, Elijah had been on a roller coaster, both emotionally and spiritually. At Mount Carmel, Elijah had defeated the prophets of Baal. Israel had turned away from God and they had begun worshiping the pagan god Baal. So Elijah challenged the prophets of Baal to a contest to see who was the one true God. They were to take a bull, prepare it for sacrifice, and this except to add no fire. They were to call on Baal to add the fire. Boy, they put on a show. They danced around the altar, they shouted, they cut themselves. This went on all day. No fire. And in the evening, Elijah then built an altar of stones. He stacked up wood, and he went so far as soaking the wood. He prayed a simple prayer, and God responded and sent down fire, proving once and for all that Yahweh was the one true God. Then the Israelites killed the prophets, and Elijah was on a spiritual high. Well, after a bit, King Ahab told his wife Jezebel what had happened, and she vowed to have Elijah killed. So then Elijah was running for his life. Now he was at a spiritual low. And for me, with those emotional roller coasters, as I'm sure you are as well, especially right now in these times, we feel really good about things, and then we listen to the news. Big mistake. So anyway, Elijah's running for his life. He finally finds a cave to hide in, and this is where the text begins today. 1 Kings 19, verses 9b to 13. The word of the Lord came to him. What are you doing here? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altar, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. And the Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? Let us pray. Lord, as we listen to this message today, help us to consider this question. What are we doing here today? Why are we here? What are we to do in your kingdom? Lord, I pray that you will be in this message and your spirit will speak to us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. The first thing that God asked Elijah is, what are you doing here? You know, we read this for a minute and we're probably thinking, yeah, you know, Elijah, this is unbelievable. You just had this wonderful victory with God. And then all of a sudden now, the first sign of trouble, <laughs> you run and hide. Friends, God asked us as well, what are you doing here? Why are you trembling? Why are you afraid? Haven't I proven that I am the mighty God? You know, this virus has been going on for over six months. We don't know how much longer it will be. We are like Elijah on an emotional roller coaster. People are being healed. They are working on a vaccine. Stock market goes up and it goes down again. But we're praising God because things may be beginning to look a little better. But then we begin to hear of other cases, people that we know. Some others are dying. 
We hear of outbreaks. And then, of course, there's more happening than COVID as well. There's racial tension. There are hurricanes and earthquakes and fires. And there are people with other illnesses. There's cancer and heart problems. We would like to just go hide in a cave. But God says, what are you doing? Why are you hiding? I have already done miraculous things, and I don't need you to hide. I need you to tell people about my love and grace. You see, Elijah was one hot mess, and so are we. Right now, we're at an all-time low in many ways. Probably much worse than we've been. If we're not, we certainly have been in some other times. We all understand how Elijah may have felt. You see, Elijah was in a very desperate condition. He was gripped by fear, and he was overwhelmed with depression. I can completely identify that. With that, I retired last June. We sold a house and moved to a condo. After we got moved and everything was sorted out, I suddenly went into a deep depression. That's something I had never experienced before. You know, we all have ups and downs. But this was worse than anything I had ever been through. I couldn't eat. I couldn't sleep. I had no interest in anything. We even went on a cruise and I lost weight. Now that's saying how depressed I was. Because the thing is, that period of darkness, though, I really believe prepared me to get me through some of this strange time. I still have times that I'd like to run away and hide. But God will ask me again, what are you doing here? Why are you pouting? Why are you wallowing in despair? I have provided before. I will now. So when God asked Elijah what he was doing there, in other words, he was saying, you know, Elijah, why are you pouting? Elijah tells God, Lord, I've been loyal to you. I've done everything you asked me to do. And now Jezebel wants to kill me. And I'm just going to lie down here and die. Sounds like a pity party to me. Do we do this? Lord, I go to church every Sunday, or at least right now we tune in every Sunday. I continue to send in my offerings. I'm attending a Bible study, even if it's on Zoom. I pack boxes for the food pantry. I try to do whatever you ask. So why did I lose my job? Why am I sick? Why did my loved one die? Oh, how we love pity parties. So when things aren't going well, we, like Elijah, want to run and hide. So let's think for a minute first, how did Elijah get to this point? First of all, he was mentally overstrained. It was about three and a half years that Elijah had been preaching to the Israelites. They were stubborn people, and they wouldn't listen. They kept turning to pagan gods until Elijah finally set up this contest on Mount Carmel. He had an awesome victory. You know, after some great victory or something big is accomplished, seems like you have a time of letdown. Have you ever been there? Especially maybe if you're really doing something big for God. The excitement of the moment fades and you get kind of down. You may have experienced this on returning from a mission trip or even after a retreat, you know, where there's lots of excitement and you really feel close to God. So you come back, your body may be refreshed, but you are mentally exhausted. So Elijah was mentally overstrained. And then Elijah was physically exhausted. Of course, all the excitement at Mount Carmel not only took a mental toll, but it did take a physical toll. And to top it off, he had just taken a long cross-country run for his life. When he first heard of Jezebel's threats, he first went into the wilderness, sat under a tree, and asked God to let him die. He was pretty depressed. But then an angel brought him food. He slept through the night. He got up and ate again. God told him to get up and get going. And then scripture says he traveled 40 days and 40 nights to Mount Horeb, where he found the cave and spent the night. We get physically exhausted, don't we? 
You know, after my depression, I still wasn't sure what God intended for me after I'd spent these years in ministry. So I started getting involved in all kinds of stuff. I was in Bible studies, choir, handbells, Emmaus. In fact, at the beginning of COVID, I was getting to, beginning to get pretty stressed because I didn't know how I was going to get it all done. I was physically exhausted as well as mentally strained. It was strange when everything came to an abrupt halt. At first, I enjoyed that time of quiet and not having anything to do, but I think now in an effort to have some semblance of normal, again, we're overcrowding our calendars. We have a lineup of Zoom meetings. We spend hours on the phone trying to have some contact with others. There are webcasts and webinars and conference calls. Now that this pandemic has continued for six months, we are, again, overstrained mentally and exhausted physically. But then Elijah was also spiritually out of touch. Oh, sure, he had experienced a spiritual high at Mount Carmel. He should be praising God, but his circumstances changed. He feared for his life because Jezebel was threatening him. He forgot what God had just done. He forgot about God's almighty power. He took his eyes off the Lord and looked at his circumstances. This may be where a lot of us are right now. We may have experienced some God-filled moments in the past. Perhaps a loved one was healed of an illness or an addiction. Maybe ourselves. We were healed. Baptism and confirmation of our precious children is always a high and holy moment. Maybe a spouse came to know Jesus Christ or our own salvation experience we remember. You name your moments of God's victories. I'm sure you have some. But now we struggle because some have lost jobs. Some may be worried about retirement. We may be distanced from our families and our close friends. We're ill or we have loved ones who are ill or recently died. We began to look closer at our circumstances than at Jesus Christ. It's really easy now to be spiritually out of touch. Oh, sure, we watch church on our computer or our TV or from a distance in our cars. Even when we begin to worship inside, we'll be socially distanced and wearing masks. It's not like it always has been. Worship is not the same. So it's easy to be spiritually out of touch. But this is the good news, my friends. God would not allow Elijah to remain in that state. And God will not allow us to remain in this state. Because first of all, God attended to the needs of his body. When Elijah was sulking under the bush and asked to die, that's when God sent an angel to give him food and water. He allowed him to have some time to rest, get a good night's sleep. And then when Elijah awoke, the angel provided him a good breakfast to have strength for his journey. You see, we can't combat our physical exhaustion without following those basic rules of health. Good and nourishing food. Now, granted, we have plenty of food right now. But nourishing is the key. Most of us turn to cookies and ice cream in a crisis. Well, maybe you don't, but I do. Thus, the COVID-15, you know, the gaining the extra 15 pounds at least. But good, balanced meals give us strength for the journey. We need regular, sufficient sleep. It's amazing what a good night's sleep can do for physical exhaustion and mental exhaustion because we have more energy and we can think more clearly. After Elijah slept, his circumstances hadn't changed, but his attitude had. Oh, Jezebel was still chasing him and still threatening him, so he had to move on. He wasn't going to just lay down and die, though. He did move on. He got up, he ate a good breakfast, went on his journey. So he got his exercise. He needed fresh air and exercise. Elijah got plenty of that, in fact because he did walk those 40 days and 40 nights. When COVID first hit, we were confined to our homes. We were encouraged to get out and get some fresh air and take a walk if we could avoid crowds. Exercise and sunshine actually help your immunity. 
And exercise also helps your attitude and fights depression. So physically exhausted, eat right, sleep well, and exercise. Now, I have a past of being a nurse, so there's my medical advice to you. Now, God also attended to the needs of his mind. When Elijah woke in the cave, God asked him this question. What are you doing here, Elijah? Elijah began to complain. He'd been loyal to God. He was frustrated with the people of God. And he was afraid because of Jezebel's threat. You see, God gave Elijah the chance to tell him what was wrong. God really doesn't mind hearing our complaints, even though he already knows what we're worried about. He doesn't even mind if we get angry with him. It's good for our mental status, actually, if we talk to God about what's bothering us. He wants us to acknowledge our feelings. So tell God that you're afraid or you're angry or you're frustrated. He wants to hear what's in our hearts and he will attend to our mind. Lastly, God can attend to the needs of our spirit, which is the most important. You see, Elijah was out of touch spiritually. He had lost faith in God. Even after seeing God's miraculous power at Mount Carmel, he couldn't trust God to protect him. God wanted to show Elijah who God was. So first, there was a mighty wind that tore the mountains and shattered the rocks. And then there was an earthquake. Scripture said that the Lord was not in the wind or in the earthquake, but yet the wind and the earthquake reveal the power of God. You see, he has the power to bring down mountains and shatter rocks. And he has the power to get rid of this virus. He has the power to heal families and relationships. Then there was fire. And scripture says the Lord was not in the fire. Yet the fire revealed the glory of God. If you know the story of the Israelites' journey in the wilderness, you may remember that God guided them by a cloud by day and a fire by night. You see, fire is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit, my friends, burns within us and will guide us if we allow it. Then after the fire came a whisper. In spite of his power and glory, God is also very tender. And in the midst of storms, it is often that tiny, tender voice that we hear as God whispers in our ear. So friends, once again, God gently asks you, what are you doing here? Hopefully soon we'll be able to come back together, even if we are wearing masks. But our prayer is that we let God attend to our physical, our mental, and spiritual needs. We may give excuses or ignore his calling for a while, but let's listen for his whisper. When we come back together, let's know what our purpose is and why we are here. Because we all are here for a purpose. I look forward to serving with you all as we discover together what we are doing here. Let us pray. Holy God, we do ask today, what are we doing here? But Lord, we know that you have put us all here for a purpose and that we're going through this time right now, perhaps that we can learn what our purpose is. Help us, Lord, to listen for your gentle whisper as you guide us and direct us and lead us in what you'd have us do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, thanks for worshiping with us. We're glad to have you this time. We, there's a lot going on here at Ackworth. It, we're going to have a song in just a moment. Do a song if you would like to give to our mission and ministries. There'll be instructions on the screen for that. Thank you so much. Thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious song that sung by flaming tongues above. 
the mount I'm fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. Here I raise my Ebenezer, here by thy great help I come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God, he to rescue me from Interposed his precious blood. God of glory, voice of thunder, split the cedars, bring us under all the shadows of your wings. They give us strength, you bring us peace. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, thy good fetter, bind my wandering heart to me. Grown to wonder, Lord, I feel it, grown to Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. God of glory, voice of thunder, split the seas, bring us under all the shadows of your wings, they give us strength. Thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Hi, I hope you'll turn in next week. Again, thanks for being with us. And now, my friends, go and think about this week. What are you doing here? What is your purpose? We love you.